Hi guys, welcome to week 23. Uh, I'm starting to lose my voice because I have pre-recorded all these videos, so I'm going to try and get through this quickly. Uh, but week 23, we do have a couple things to go over. So, nice easy beginning to our week. Uh, make sure on Monday or Tuesday you are turning in those worksheets that I assigned last Thursday or Friday. Uh, those manual review worksheets, I did make them due the next week, so you have the weekend to finish them if you did not already in class. So make sure you have those submitted to me. Um, you're also going to be watching a video called Ocean Stories on Whales and Dolphins. Again, kind of going over everything we've talked about in our chapter 13. So make sure that you get that worksheet submitted because um, that's what you're going to have due that day, both homeroom and in class. Now on Wednesday and Thursday, we're going to go ahead and get started on your chapter 13 study guide. Like I said, chapter 13 is a good short chapter, not anything as big as 10 was. Uh, so we are going to go ahead and start wrapping that up at this time. So make sure you get those chapter 13 questions and answers into your journal uh, for that study guide for your test that is ultimately to come. Now on Friday, this is where things are going to have to be discussed a little bit. Now uh, we are going to do your Kahoot review um, on this day, but uh, the most important thing is going to be the formal assignment of your 3D projects. Now, I know my wonderful uh, Marine 2 students, this is what you've been looking forward to uh, since you started this class, right? So uh, with you guys, I don't have to talk about it quite as much because you did this last year, most of you. Uh, those of you that didn't, it's fairly simple and your buddies can tell you how much fun it is. So I'm just gonna briefly go through your 3D projects um, and kind of what's expected. The due date is posted with these rubrics that are already on your Google Classroom, so you can take a look and see what your due date is. It is going to be after spring break, so you have from now until the week we return after spring break to make sure you get this two-part project done. So there will be no excuses on time, no late work accepted, none of that. All right, if you have questions, ask them now. You have weeks to get started on this stuff, so no sympathy for me. Sorry guys, but um, we are gonna go ahead and have these assignments in. So, 3D projects. Two part project, uh, they are gonna be test grades. So at the very beginning of the year, actually the first day of school, you picked your marine animal. And from that marine animal, you are going to be constructing a 3D model and also a presentation uh, teaching the class about your species. So I'm going to quickly run through the rubric here. These are posted on Google Classroom, so feel free to take a look at them with me. So uh, the first portion of your project, the first grade, is going to be, of course, the 3D model. This is going to be the biggest portion. Um, so using the rubric that I posted on Google Classroom, um, you are going to construct an accurate 3D model of the marine animal you've chosen. You cannot switch, you cannot change what is posted on the list that is on Google Classroom in case you've forgotten what your animal was, that is what you are stuck with. So hopefully it is a good animal. I know a lot of my Marine too. Y'all were smart and y'all picked easy stuff to construct this year. Uh, so good for you. So of course, um, content wise, it does have to be 3D. It does have to be the animal you chose. Um, it needs to be made from a variety of materials. I usually don't have a problem with this every year, y'all. Uh, continue to impress me with some of the things you bring in. Now, for sanitary reasons, models cannot be made out of food. Don't bring me a dead fish if you picked a fish. <laughs> I do not want a dead fish. It has to be something you made. Uh, and for sanitary reasons, I do hang them up. I do display them. There are plenty displayed around the classroom. You can take a look around and see. Um, so I don't want rotten food in the classroom. So, um, it does have to be constructed solely by you, meaning you can't buy a model kit or anything like that. Like I said, don't bring me <laughs> any live fish or anything like that. Uh, it needs to be something that you have constructed. Uh, Size-wise, it's got to be at least a foot in length. Now, if you have a bottlenose dolphin, that means it could be a foot long. If you have a box jellyfish, it could be a foot tall. But it needs to be at least a foot, and yes, I do whip out the ruler and check. So. Um, it needs to be either tall or long, at least by a foot. Now, realism. Um, all components of the model have to be realistic in their appearance as much as possible. Um, I always tell you guys I don't expect you to be Picasso, but this project, I do expect to be able to look at your project and know exactly what it is. If I don't know what it is, then that's an issue. So it either needs to be 
made with materials that are the right color, or it can be painted or colored or whatever the case may be, um, so that it is accurate to the actual species. So if you use construction paper, it could be colored construction paper. If you have a red fish, you could use red paper. If you have uh, a red fish and you don't have red paper, then you could paint it. Whatever the case may be, it needs to be as accurate as possible to the actual species that you have chosen. Uh, now, effort and neatness. This is ultimately where I take off the most points every single year. Uh, so an adequate effort needs to be given to this project. Like I said, you have weeks of time to plan, get your materials together, get it constructed, so on and so forth. You even have the whole week of spring break. So if you come to me with something that you just knocked out the Sunday before it's due uh, and you give that last minute messy, poorly constructed work, it's obviously going to result in deductions. So I wasn't born yesterday. I know when you guys put the effort into it and those that do, do get the full points and typically extra credit. But um, yeah, with the amount of time that I'm giving, I'm giving over a month of like extra time plus spring break, um, definitely going to be looking for that effort put in. Now creativity, this is going to be that exceptionally clever, unique, showing that deep understanding of the animal. So that again, kind of brings us back to the effort and neatness. Make sure it's um, a good looking project, captivating. Um, I know what it is right off the bat when I look at it. And then of course, with all my projects, there is extra credit opportunity to uh, students who produce an exceptional model. A lot of the models I have around the room, these are gonna be my extra credit students that I've held up to their projects. Unfortunately, after several years, a lot of them are falling apart. So they do need to be replaced. So I do give extra credit to those where uh, I can hold on to them to show future classes. Now for the second portion of your project, that is going to, to be your presentation. Um, now again, this is going to be done on that same species that you chose, the same one you're doing your 3D model on. Uh, it's going to be a PowerPoint presentation. I have posted an example of the PowerPoint I created for the animal I did three, four years back now, um, which is that uh, octopus that you see in the back corner there. So I did make a PowerPoint and I posted it as an example. Um, the rubric, I'm really just gonna tell you to go read the rubric on everything. It tells you exactly what slides you need to have. Uh, there's one on appearance, there's one on where it's found, there's one on lifespan, there's one on what it eats, etc. So I literally lay out exactly what you need to have in this presentation. You need to show that you have good knowledge of your species, um, a good focus. You need to have plenty of information. A lot of you, the last PowerPoint project you turned in, it was like one sentence per slide. That is not gonna be accepted this time for um, very obvious reasons. You've got weeks and weeks and weeks to work on this. So I expect good um, cohesive information with uh, proper spelling and grammar. Uh, I know you guys like to be funny with your PowerPoint sometimes, but you are presenting this to the class, to me, and a lot of the times I usually have administration come and sit and walk through, so make sure it is good, um, good on sources, good on the information, the material. Um, this is going to be a professional style PowerPoint presentation, so please construct it as such. And like I said, that grading rubric is on your Google Classroom for you to examine. So if anyone has any questions, <laughs> I know that was a lot of information. Uh, all of it is posted on Google Classroom. I'm going to make a little section in your uh, classroom page specifically for the stuff um, for this project. Since, like I said, there are weeks between now and when it's due, that way you can easily find it. So the rubric for the 3D model, the rubric for the PowerPoint, uh, the list of everyone's animals and what you chose, the um, examples, all of that's going to be posted on Google Classroom. So if you have any questions, email me. Don't wait until the last second. Um, and I am happy to help. All right. You guys have a wonderful week. Bye.